Well, I suppose I should thank Heath for the lead in because I kind of wanted to start off today talking about the bullshit ways Christians are co-opting feminism in their crusade against trans rights. It's fast becoming their go-to excuse when they're banning drag shows, but it's also long been their rallying cry against trans rights in general. They're protecting women in public restrooms, or they're protecting the integrity of women's sports, or both more generally and more grandiosely, they're protecting the very concept of womanhood. Hell, the Christian Post just sponsored a whole conference on that subject last weekend. They invited a bunch of panelists to address a crowd of 150 people in Dallas about all the dangers that trans people pose to women and to women's rights. And this is obviously full of the most ridiculous, hypocritical, scaremongering imaginable. Hell, one speaker talked about the dangers to women in prison who, quote, are required to share prison cells with men due to gender self-ID laws, end quote. As though anyone attending a Christian post conference in Dallas ever gave a shit about a prisoner before. But the reason I wanted to talk about it is less because of the event and more because of the article they posted about it. And as loath as I am to do it, I'm going to drop a link in the show notes so that you can confirm this. Because a lot has rightly been made of the parallels between the rise of organized transphobia in modern America and the rise of Nazism in 1930s Germany. And if you ever think maybe that's been overblown, I need you to recognize that the Christian Post just ran the headline, quote, Unmasking Gender Ideology. Panel warns women are going to lose rights if trans ideologues win. End quote. And the opening goddamn line of that goddamn article was, quote, what is a human being and what does it mean to be a human being? End quote. And even though I didn't really need an example to prove that the concerned conservative Christians are suddenly showing for feminist issues is a load of shit, Republicans in Idaho provided me with one last week when they blocked a bill that would have guaranteed access to menstrual hygiene products to any student in public schools that needed them. And their reasoning was that doing so would be woke. So yeah, Idaho was poised to become just the 16th state to pass a law saying that schools had to provide tampons, sanitary napkins, and other menstrual products to anyone who needs them. The cost of doing so was estimated at a meager 435 to 735,000 bucks a year. And this shit matters for people in poverty. According to a recent survey from a women's rights group on this, 23% of U.S. students have limited access to menstrual products. This obviously leads to a ton of embarrassment, but it also leads to missed school days for poorer students, adding yet another barrier between them and success. But alas, it wasn't to be, because shit Republicans stood in the way of it and declared it to be an effort to turn Idaho into a nanny state. As State Representative Heather Scott puts it, quote, what's going to be next? We can't help but sweat, so are the schools going to be providing deodorant for these kids? End quote which she presented as though it was a point for her side. But of course, the biggest problem that Republicans cited was that the discussion around the bill used terms like period poverty and menstrual equality, which means the bill is woke because they've successfully redefined woke to their constituency as anything we don't like that has thinky words in it. And with apologies both for being gone so long and for depressing the hell out of you on my return, I'll wrap things up and hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. <laughs> 